ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Above the Bar podcast, where each week we belly up to the bar with a new guest, find out what they do, who they are, and what makes them great. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alrighty, folks, welcome back to the Above the Bar podcast. It's your host, Sean. We're bellied up to the bar now today. Oh, I don't know what just happened here. We're bellied up to the bar today with a master sales technician, a marketing guru, a uh, silver, t- I can try to think of everything I can, a silver tongue devil here to teach us the ins and the outs, the do's and the don'ts of, of sales. We have brought brought with us coming from lands unknown in the far flung he's got an okay beard we got to talk to him about his beard a little bit we got to figure out who's got a better one we brought with us mr everett farnell <laughs> you didn't realize you were getting the balls yeah. through did you yeah no uh, that was pretty amazing and uh, uh i'll make sure i uh i'll make sure i i i drop that check in the mail that i promised you for that uh, for that intro uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, make sure you know we got to get got to get everybody paid here. You know, got to get everybody paid. So, Everett's joined us. We're we're talking about sales, marketing, uh, trying to get it. You know, I I love sales. I've told it, said it a thousand times. Uh, I think it's the greatest skill that you can have in life is is knowing how to talk. But we're gonna get into that here a little bit more. But first things first, let's do our house cleaning in the bar. Over my right shoulder, for those of you that are watching us on the live stream, if you're watching the videos, or if you're listening to the audio, trust me, it's over my right shoulder, I promise you, is the, the big sign for sticker and a cause. If you've got something you're supporting, maybe you've got a sales team that you're look, you've are you got a sticker for, you've got a, a sports team, Little League, any kind of charitable organization, I don't care what it is, you've got your own podcast. Reach out to me on Facebook, the Above the Bar podcast. We also, our network is the Earplug Podcast Network. You can catch us there. LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, it's TikTok. It's all the Above the Bar podcast. If you reach out to us on any one of those platforms, even our email, the Above the Bar podcast at gmail.com. Let me know what it is. I'll give you the address where to send, send what you got. Send us a sticker and we'll read it live on the air. Everybody will know about it. Everybody will hear about what you've got and what you're supporting. So make sure you, you reach out to us. Also, maybe your media needs a little better marketing, needs a little better design. You want to reach out to Media by Dibs, and that's D-I-B-S. You can catch Dibs on Facebook at Media by Dibs. Instagram is Media by Dibs. And if you go on to uh, LinkedIn, his LinkedIn is uh, Andrew Dibble, D-I-B-B-L-E-S. If you reach out to Dibs and you let him know, belly up to the bar, tell him, I'm here to belly up to the bar. He's going to give you a 10% discount on your first order and a free consultation. So make sure you check out Media by Dibs. So the bar is now open. Uh, the beard. Uh, look, you're already getting compliments on, on the beard there, brother, from my, my buddy Nate. <laughs> we're, we're big beard people around here. Uh, if you might not be able to see it. Uh, that sticker right there, that's our buddy uh, Aaron Jordan or Aaron Johnson. Oh, okay. Aaron is a national, like, national all-around beard champion. He has his wow. beard two, two feet long. Oh, and, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and he gets into, like, like I didn't realize, like, where what's considered as a goatee. Like, you can just shave, like, a little strip back here, and now you're a goatee, mm-hmm. and you can have, like, this. Well, this yeah, that's, thing. That's, that's what I have. Some in between the whole Santa Claus, the full-blown Santa Claus, and, uh, and just a goatee, just depending on how how uh, lazy I am feeling about shaving. Sometimes if I feel lazy, I'll just do my head and let my, uh, let the Santa Claus come in, but I'm all uh, about it. Yeah. I, yeah. I just heard one that out in St. Louis, they've got like a competition and they had a category for me. Like I never, like I've getting mine a little bushy sometimes, but I like this look Mm -hmm. and uh, they actually have a category there called business beard. And okay. So it's gotta be four inches or less. And, has to be like very well kept and has to be presented in a way like you're going into a, a business office situation. I see. Nice. And, and nice. I, I, th- I think that kind of feeds into what we're going to be talking about today, sales and marketing. Uh, give everybody a little bit of an idea of what your background in sales and marketing is. 
Well, I, I started. Uh, well, I, I started selling professionally as a as a salesperson when I was eighteen years old. Uh, I got a job. At, I mean, I bounced around like most eighteen year olds from one job to another, uh, mainly low levels telemarketing stuff, um, you know, scammy kind of stuff, and and decided that that really was not for me. You know, back back in the day, you remember nine hundred numbers; they're not around oh, anymore. Yes. But uh, there was one thing where uh, that's how you did billing. So, so you would uh, call up somebody and uh, uh, offer them a package of. Uh, uh, places that would give them a credit card and uh, guarantee them that they would get a credit card if they did what did what you said in the package and blah. Well, they guaranteed you get a credit card because it was a secured card. So, you know, it wasn't real hard to make that guarantee. If you put the money up, you had to, you had to, you know, you had to do the stuff for the card. Well, the stuff for the card was put five hundred dollars up, and we'll give you a credit card. Um, and uh, so we would telemarketers smiling and dialing and and uh, uh, and then we say, okay, well, when somebody says, yeah, I want it, say, okay, well, I'm gonna hang up and you dial this number and I'm going to call you back in 42 seconds after you dial the number and, and because it, they'd have to stay on so long and you give me the code that they tell you at the 40 second mark. And, and so that was, the uh, that was one of the first ones. And of course that was, it was just terrible. I, I mean, I worked there for a few weeks and figured out these guys are scam artists and I don't want anything to do with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and Made then you feel dirty. Ranks, um, yeah, well, I did. And, and, uh, Every time I got on the phone, it smelled like uh, stale coffee and and uh, old lady uh, old lady perfume from the woman who used the booth in front of me. Um, so yes, then it was, God, you know, I've got under- something to sell to you. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, that was it. Stale coffee, cigarettes, and old lady perfume. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so then I, I I went to work for a place that sold uh, software to to computer technicians. Um, by the way, if I'm kind of giving you the long version, if you want me to, uh, no, you, the chase, uh, I will, we want to hear the long version. Okay. Well, so I uh, so I went in and worked there for several years, and that was a little bit. It was still phone sales, but it was a little bit more of a professional environment. We were actually selling uh, uh, selling technician tools to computer technicians. Um, so we, you know, we call get a client base, and you call them when you had new products and et cetera, et cetera. And and, uh, uh, and it actually, you know, I mean, it was a, a pretty decent gig as far as it went. Uh, the owners kind of got a little out of control and, and things went sideways. They, um, there was a lot of money running through that place. And when you have uh, a lot of money and owners who are in their late 20s, things kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a, a little, get a little wild a little for itself. Rails. Yeah, got a little wild, a little crazy. And, and, uh, and then from there, um, uh, you know, I've sold. I've sold sunrooms, I've sold roofs, a lot of contracting oh, wow. work. Um, and I started uh, my, uh, I had a friend who, I sold cable TV when it, when digital cable first came out. Um, I went out, ran around door to door and sold cable TV to people. That was a pretty easy sale. Didn't need any money, just sign here and you get, you know, 400 channels um, instead of the 20 channels you're getting right now and you'll save $10 a month. That was pretty, that was pretty nice. It was sale. simple. It was pretty simple. Yeah, it's very simple. Uh, so then it was, uh, uh, oh, and then we went, you know, I, I, uh, a friend of mine had a business, asked me to come aboard and start selling and working with him. And he gave me uh, uh, 25% of the business, which was nice because, you know, we uh, uh, basically we took the business from a, from a little tiny one man shop to, uh, uh, to, a, to a company that was doing a million or more a year in sales oh, and had its own crew and, you know, and, and I did a lot of that. Um, I won't say that it was all me, but you know, it was a significant portion. Uh, and then we, um, uh, and, and I went on to open my own business and, and bought into a roofing company. I, I've done a lot of work in the contracting industry. Um, along the way, I uh, met some people who introduced me to professional sales trainers, Zig Ziglar and Tom Hopkins and some of the older guys. If, uh, if we have some sales, anybody listening in sales, you know, they might know uh, Grant Cardone and Jordan Belfort and, and Brad Lee, some of the new guys. But but the guys from back, the guys from back when Zig Ziglar and Tommy Hopkins and these guys, um, Jay Douglas Edwards was Tommy Hopkins uh, 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 mentor. Um, those guys are the guys who really started that whole industry. They, they really kind of brought that industry up. And, uh, you know, so, so these new, the new crop of guys, and they're good. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I think Belfort's, uh, Jordan Belfort's exclam, uh, explanate, ex, pardon me, explanation of, uh, um, 
uh, of voice uh, uh, tonality is the best explanation of voice tonality ever. He's amazing. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, it's great stuff. That. It's funny you mentioned the voice tonality. So we were on TikTok Live mm-hmm. just before this, and I was mentioning that we were mm-hmm. talking about sales, and somebody was, somebody was like, oh, it's all about how you – it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And, and I firmly, absolutely believe that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can it, – it, it's that it's that delivery, you know. It's just like saying the – I mean, it, we used – now, I'm curious, just in your sales training, did you ever uh, – did anyone ever try to get you just to sell random items as they were training you? Like, sell me this pen. Describe oh, no. Sell me this no, that's, no, that's, see, that's that, what that, I grew that, up that's on. That's a trick question, though. Yeah, see, that's a trick question, though. Uh, because, the because well, because sell me this pen, well, why would you want a pen? See, the, see, that's not about selling the pen. That's about finding out why you need a pen. Well, that's need behind the need when you find out why you need the pen. Yeah, yeah. When you find when you find out why the person needs the pen, then selling the pen becomes very easy. You know. Hey, let me ask you. Let me ask you, question, John. Uh, if somebody showed up today, if if somebody showed up today uh, right now with a contract for you to do a speaking gig, uh, and the fee was a hundred thousand dollars, and all expense paid, flight to to you know Italy or France or wherever you name it. Um, you, you know, could you sign the contract right this second? Sure. Well, no. Well, why? Well, it, it, you would sign a contract right this second, but you can't sign a contract because you don't have a pen. However, for a quarter, <laughs> I'll give you this nice big pen, and then you will be prepared whenever something happens. Oh, I love no matter it. what happens to you in your life. Let's face it. Nobody's going to show up with a $100,000 contract well, for you to sign to right this minute, but uh, you want to be prepared because uh, and the pen is mightier than the sword. I uh, you know, dream. I mean, something like that. It's not... It's not, oh, well, this is a nice pen, and oh, and it writes real easy, and it writes real good. Yeah, so does every other pen in the world. Shut up. Thank the, you. the point is to paint the picture and find out, you know, find out where the need is for them to, uh, uh, and, and that's, that, that's the key to selling anything, really, um, is just finding out where the, what the person wants, what the person needs. And, and by the way, want is more important than need. So one of the robber parents, I forget which one it was, but one of the robber parents, "Quote unquote," Robert Barons from the Gilded Age of of America um, said one time, and, and he was right that people will do without what they need, but they'll move heaven and earth to get what they want. So uh-huh. it's a matter of what they want. So I, I mean, you know, everybody needs a roof over their head. There's things that everybody needs, but the truth is that what we will really jump through hoops and do backflips for is what we want. So it's a matter of finding, you know, finding what, so uh, finding how what you're selling meets the desires of the person who, um, uh, you know, the person who, uh, uh, who you're selling to and then plugging, uh, plugging that into their desires. Now, when you were, it, it's interesting you brought that up because that's actually when I was initially trained, I was trained through um, Achieve Global, who they don't exist mm-hmm. anymore. That was the company that I was trained through and it was exactly what you're talking about, need satisfaction selling. Um, were you ever right. trained in any of those like specific disciplines? Hey, going to a formal training, formal schools, or was it more read the books, listen to the speakers, that type of type of learning? I, I did a Dale Carnegie uh, training course one time. A guy who I was working for traded. Um, uh, he traded to send me to the Dale Carnegie. He traded with him. He was a print shop, and the Dale Carnegie company wanted some printing done, uh, so. Uh, he traded printing for me to go to the uh, go to the Dale Carnegie course, uh, which is very nice of him, obviously. And that was uh, that was super helpful. I don't remember. Some, I don't really remember. It's been a long time ago, so I don't re- really remember the specifics. Like they had a technique for remembering who people's names, and it's uh, you know building like a you build a a, a, a statue. You know you build a, a pile of stuff based on. So you get somebody's name and you associate it with this picture, and then you get somebody's occupation, and then you hang it on the side of the name, and you know you build kind of this this mental um, uh, sculpture. So, to speak. Uh, so I don't. I don't remember the exact details of how that worked or, or I mean, some of the others, but as a approach to sales, it, uh, it was very, it was wonderful as approach to sales. But other than that, most of my sales training has been, um, uh, had an independent, uh, uh, you know, getting the tapes, getting the CDs, reading the books, uh, and then, and then trying and testing and, 
you know, the, the, you put enough information in there and suddenly it just starts popping out. Um, you know, I, I was, uh, I was training somebody in one of my companies. I own, I own several different companies and I was training somebody in one of my companies the other day and we're out making a sales call. This is a home services company. And, uh, the woman, you know, the woman's telling me, Oh, well, we just paid $15,000 for a new AC and 13, I don't know what $5,000 for a new 7,000, whatever it was for a new AC and $15,000 for a new roof. And, and you just heard the guy, my car is going to be $5,000 to fix. Um, you know, we were selling her something for like 1200 bucks. And, uh, she says, Oh, no, no, it's this and Oh, it's that. And Oh, the other. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and could you do any better? And I said, uh, I said, unfortunately, ma'am, we can't. That's the best price we can give you. But here's the good news. Once you pay this $1,200, this is the smallest problem you have. And once you pay us to take care of it, you'll never have to worry about it again. Now, I don't know where that came from. I know I, know I heard it somewhere. They just made it up. <laughs> but it was buried in the subconscious somewhere from some training program I listened to 15 years ago or maybe 15 months ago. I don't know. But it was and it popped up right at the right time. Boom! And came out of the mouth, and so it's you know, and 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 of course she signed and whipped out her credit card. So that was uh, uh, it's just a matter, you know, you you, you want to keep putting the the keep putting the information in there over and over and over, even if you're listening to the same stuff over and over. You want to keep putting the information in there, keep packing it in because um, it 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 jumps out at the at the damnedest times, right exactly when you need it. It'll hop right out and you close a deal. And you, I don't have I, I know I didn't make that up, but I don't know where I heard it from. But it wasn't me. But uh, it was it was worth the time listening to that CD, whichever CD it was. Well, it, it, it's interesting that you, that you bring up that the it's almost the muscle memory side to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big fan of. I don't know what you would call it. I, I I call it this. It's probably got another name. You know, one of these guys like you mentioned, especially like the Dale Carnegies and all those. It's probably got some fancy ass name, but I call it, you know, more foundational sales. Like, mm-hmm. learn learn a basic skill set. Learn a technique. I don't care what it is. Learn a technique in sales, and go sell using it. Don't add anything to it. Don't do anything. Just use that one over mm-hmm. and over. And as you get better, you'll add stuff to it. But once you start sucking or times get tough, go back to that foundation and you can build again. Mm-hmm. That was always my thing. Yeah. What, yeah. What, is, it, what, do you, what do you do to make sure that when you're having those rough times or those rough periods to make sure that you're, you're still able to, to kind of fix yourself or, or like you said, training somebody to make sure you can always go back and fix them. Well, I, my, um, my foundation that, that what really gave me, uh, uh, the leg up in sales was Tom Hopkins, how to master the art of selling anything. And, um, so that, that program is the one that I go back to over and over again. And it's, uh, uh, it, it is a, uh, it, it, well, it's a full program, but it talks about, uh, it talks about leading people through questions instead of telling them, um, you lead them through questions. So they come to the conclusions that you want them to come through. Uh, it talks about, uh, uh, it talks about memorizing the closes, uh, and you memorize the closes, not because you're going to re- repeat it back robotically. You're memorized the closes because, uh, just what I said, you want to have them in the subconscious and the best way to get them in the subconscious is to memorize them. Cause if your conscious mind remembers them, you can be darn sure your subconscious mind will remember them and they will be available when, when need be. So it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I would go back to that program, uh, over and over and over again. I, I don't even know if it's available anymore, but if, if, uh, uh, you know, if somebody can find it, I'd recommend they get it if they're in sales. Cause it's, it's an outstanding fundamentals program and it's just like anything i like that program because it breaks down the fundamentals um it uh, you know zig ziglar stuff is very amusing he's a great he delivers some great stuff uh and uh, but i would go down i would i would go to anything that breaks down the fundamentals and that gives you an entire system so i i'm i'm gonna sound like i'm i'm shilling for tom hopkins and jordan belfort but i'm really not i just you know i i've used them and i enjoy them um Uh, and, but if you really, uh, if you really want to be a great salesperson, um, you know, I, I think the straight line is a great, 
um, a straight line system from uh, Belfort is great. I think the how to master the art of selling anything from Tommy Hopkins is great. Uh, and then there's a bunch of stuff that you can add on there as far as uh, uh, to supplement it. Um, you know, you can, you, there's all kinds of stuff from, from all kinds of salespeople and there's, you know, there's all kinds of books on sales and et cetera, et cetera. So by all means go and supplement that. But the reason I like those two programs is, is because they are complete programs. They're the foundation. They're the fundamentals. If you're, if you're, if you're slipping and you go back and you break down your presentations and, uh, you know, really do, uh, uh, it just like in sports, you know, in sports, if uh, they're going to film your, you know, they're going to film what you're doing and then you go back and look at tape of where you screwed up. Well, you don't, you might not have the ability to film what you're doing. If you do so much, the better, but you might not have the ability to film what you're doing in sales. But if you, but if you sit down and really think about the sales process and make notes, make debriefing notes, and then go back to those fundamentals and see where you're getting off track. And, and I would pick one. I like both of them, but if, if I were just starting off, I would pick one and just stick with it. Like you said, um, until you really become a master of it. And then if you, and then add some other stuff into it for sure, for all, I mean, I'm, I'm all for, you know, constant, never ending learning, but, uh, but you really want to get a very strong foundation in one before you start doing other ones. I absolutely agree with that. How about, you know, and I think in our, in, in our industries, and when I say industry, I don't sell whatever it sells. You know, I, I do staffing and I work with people to try to, show them that hey there's a benefit to letting me find your employees over you mm-hmm. wasting your time doing it we, i always tell people that my favorite in my industry is when somebody tells me well you guys cost x amount of dollars to do this you're absolutely right what does it cost you to not have an employee in place right and, and then just and then, that's one of the big things instead leave it dr- the the drop mic in sales, do you ever do you like those? Do you, do you ever do those? The, the mic drops, like just ask the question and just shut up. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's the, that's the foundation of sales. Is uh, you know there's there's a great um, if you're uh, 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 have you ever seen Glenn Gary Glenn Ross? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So ABC. so when Al Pacino comes up to Kevin Spacey and starts screaming at him, you know. If, if you never know, you don't know. If you ever, if you ever spent a day in your life, you never say anything until you know what the move is, and that's the, uh, you know, that's the essence of shut up, because you don't know what they're going to say, and if you if you jump in and start answering what you think they're going to say, you're going to get it wrong most of the time, and when you get it wrong, then you're you're completely off target. So yeah, you ask a question. Um, you know, whether it's a closing question or whether it's some other kind of question, just like you said, you know, how much does it cost you not to have an employee there? How much does it cost you? What's your time worth? How much does it cost you to spend 10, 15, 20 hours doing this instead of working on your business? You know, this kind of thing. And, and then you just shut up and, and let them answer. Cause if you don't let them answer, if you, if you jump in and start answering for them, then you screw the whole thing up. You got to shut up until you know what the shot is. I absolutely agree. How about, you know, for for you, do you have, you know, there's a lot of people out there that think they can sell. And I'm not oh, sure. beating them up or anything like that. But what is what are some of the things, as a business owner who's hiring mm. people to sell, what are some of the things that, that are key indicators for you that you say, I like that? Or maybe even industries that you personally like to, to cherry pick from for your salespeople? Well, the best salespeople I've ever had have been superstar salespeople in the car business. Um, it's, that's just the way it works for whatever, for good or bad or whatever. I've picked them out of the car business and taught them how to do, uh, how to, taught them how to sell in the business I was in. I think it's because um, the real superstars in the car business have to be killer closers. Uh, you know, they have to be able to, they have to be able to ask for the money they have to know how to do it. They have to take people. They have to understand the closing sequence. They have to understand how to walk somebody down the path of agreement, uh, not shove them, not drag them, but walk them down the path of agreement. Um, and, and they really have to know how to do that because they're in an industry where sales is super important. So uh, that would be my guess. So that, that's, the, uh, that's, the, 
the the ideal is if somebody has had um, successful uh, a successful career of any length in the car business and in any length. I don't mean three days, right. but you know, I mean they've been they worked in the car business for a couple three years and were very successful and were one of the top salespeople in the company. They're going to do great anywhere they go. Um, that's that has been my experience. Uh, the one thing I'll give you the thing that turns me off. I mean, that thing I will, will absolutely positively guarantee you never get hired is, uh, oh, yeah, I can sell. I can bullshit like every, oh, I, I, I can bullshit and go real good. I know how to bullshit. Oh, like the bullshit. Yeah, line. I, yeah. I got the gift of gab. Um, and that, that you know, you, you might as well just pack your stuff up and leave. There's no chance that you're going to get hired. I, I, I know exactly. Man, I can bullshit anything. I've been selling things my whole – I don't. I don't bullshit nobody. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think that's actually been a. a and I, I, you know, you kind of had me think about this just now. I think that's been a shift in sales in and of itself. That you know, maybe when we were younger and coming up, and you know, you had the hey, let me go ahead and show you this fast car here. Look at this; it's going to go real fast. You're going to be a, you know, that fast talking salesperson. I think is doesn't exist anymore. It's more of the guy or gal who walks in and goes, "This is what I've got." This is what I'm selling you. What do you need? Sounds good. This is how I can do it. What do you think? And just leave. Yeah. Well, I, I think that uh, I think sales sales has become a more elegant uh, industry. But I think that what the fast talking salesperson used to do still works today, as long as it's wrapped in a more elegant package. Now, if you're going hi, fast Eddie, get the ba ba cha cha, you know, <laughs> no, everybody's going to ignore you because they're going to think you're an idiot. But all the techniques that they did, all the all the strategies that they used. You know, uh, uh, Ben Gay the Third, a fantastic sales trainer, wrote a book called The Close. It's, it's one of my favorite books, and uh, on on uh, in sales. And now Ben's Ben's uh, uh, Ben's book is a sales system, but I would not. I would put it more of an advanced thing. Like I'd say, listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna read this, but don't don't make this the first book you're gonna read. Figure out a system, learn how to do what you're doing, become, get some level of success, then read the closers. And it's a whole series. Um, but uh, but when, you, when you first read, of course, Ben wrote it in the 70s or something. He's been around a long time, maybe 80s. But when you first read it, you're, you start thinking, my God, you can almost smell the coffee on the guy's breath with the three, you know, with the three ray reversible jacket with the two, two cigarette stains on the pocket. You know what I mean? Uh, but as he goes through, you find out that, what he's saying in there is just as valid today as it was in probably the late seventies when he wrote it. I don't know exactly when it was published, but something it may be early eighties, something like that, but it's been several days, it's been a long time. Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, it, it, I think that you have to be more elegant because we're in a different age. We're in a, in a far more suspicious, far, far more cynical society today than we were 50 or 60 or 70 years ago. Um, but you know, what those people did still works today. Human psychology doesn't change a tremendous amount. It, uh, it, it is expressed in different ways, but it doesn't change a tremendous amount. So the fundamentals always work. They always have worked. They always will work until, uh, Ray Kurzweil's deal comes true and we're merged with machines and uploaded into <laughs> some fucking robot or something. Pardon my French. You know, until that happens. Humans are going to be humans. Are going to be humans. Are going to be humans. It's why, uh, you know, it's why the bad boys got all the girls in the fifties, and the bad boys get all the girls in the two thousands and twenties. I mean, it's just the way it is. Human nature, and and, and you kind of you're, you're, and that kind of brings up my next thing, where I'm curious uh, for you and your in what you've been doing. Obviously, you saw a shift in sales and sales mm -hmm. styles with COVID. Is there anything that – what did you have to do? I guess there's a couple parts to this. Like what did you have to do to maintain during COVID? And then what are you keeping from that That and what are you throwing away from that? Like what do – you, do you understand what I'm asking? Uh, yeah, because uh, – uh, well, I mean I, I would say that first of all, um, luckily I'm in a, I'm in a state, the, the great state of Florida – that uh, uh, only overreacted for a few months and then realized, wait, this is, this is silly. 
and I don't mean to belittle people who have had been sick with COVID and, and, or God forbid somebody should, you know, some, you know, somebody or somebody out here died for, have a relative that died from it or something. I'm not to belittle anything, but there have been nasty illnesses coming along for thousands of years and they come and they go and society doesn't shut down. You know, the, the swine flu came through, it was terrible. MERS came through, it was terrible. Um, all this stuff happened. It all came through. It was all terrible. Um, it's just we have a overreacting society these days, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, uh, so what I would say, though, it, what we did, number one, you had to get better at telesales, uh, and that was something that 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 was something that actually is is it was good for me because I'm. Um, I think I told you that that's kind of where I cut my teeth in sales was I've done a lot of belly to belly over the kitchen table sales, but, uh, but I cut my teeth and selling on the telephone. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, I'm, um, uh, I'm kind of a, uh, let's just say I'm not a, I, I, I Everett is not going to win any style competitions in the next <laughs> rest of his life. Okay. Um, I'm perfectly happy in a pair of nasty uh, uh, worn out uh, athletic shorts and a t-shirt um, that has a ketchup stain from lunch on it. That's, you know, I'm perfectly fine with that. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, but I can get on the phone with you and in your head, I'll be wearing a three piece suit, you know? So that's, uh, uh, you know, so, so from that point of view, I, I loved it from, you know, as the telesales increased. Uh, and I think that that probably, um, as that started to happen, as uh, as more uh, telephone sales and written sa- you know written communication and email and this kind of thing, as this became more prevalent, uh, I think that uh, that some of that's not going back. You know, I mean, some of it is, you know, the 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 guy who used to travel all over the country, and uh, you know, he'd hop on the airplane and fly all over the country, and he was away from his family six days a week, um, you know, forty nine weeks a year. Uh, and now this time, all he had to, he was at home all the time and he was doing Zoom meetings and everything was fine. And look, we didn't lose that much sales and everything worked out fine. And I don't have to be away from my family. Now, some people might want to be, but that's, you know, that's, that's a different whole, story. That's a whole other subject. But, yeah, but, but, uh, but the guy who didn't want to be, the guy who was doing it only because he had to, realized, holy shit, I don't have to anymore. So some of that's not coming. Some of that's gone. Some of the, some of the stuff is never going to come back. Um, nobody, you know, they're not going to be doing traveling. They're not going to be doing that kind of stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, and I think that's a good thing. It's still there if somebody wants to do it. Uh, you know, I haven't been on an airplane in years. I, um, when my kids were young, uh, my, my, uh, daughter's 20 and my, my son is 17. And when they were about, um, I guess probably three and five. Because they're two and a half years apart. So part of the year, they look three years. Part of the year, they look two years. And uh, uh, I traveled. I was on a plane every month um, for at least a year, maybe a little bit more. And I got done with that and said, I don't ever want to travel again. So I told you I, I own a local home services business. I also own a consulting business. I do marketing and sales consulting, which is kind of how our mutual friend who, who introduced us, how I know her. Um, and, uh, uh, so I, uh, uh, I said, I don't want to do it again. And I immediately raised my prices. Um, so if you want me to come to you, that's fine, but it's going to cost you about 10 times as much as it's going to cost if we do, uh, you know, if we do an, uh, an online meeting, so we can do a day of consulting online. It's going to cost X amount. If you want me to fly to you, by the time you get done paying all the bills, it's going to cost you 10 X. And if that's really what you, if you just got to have me there, fine. But most people, you know, most people say, what's, what's the advantage of having you fly there? And I say, absolutely nothing. And they say, we'll just do it online once. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, you why don't we to stick buy to that? Me lunch. <laughs> the, yeah. the advantage is you get to buy me lunch. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a little bit more than that. I mean, first class airfare both ways, uh, five star, five star suite, uh, very, very picky diet. Well, why do you make all those demands? Because I don't want to go. Right. That's look, why. I'm trying to tell you, don't. I, bring yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying right. to tell you, let's, let's do it online. I'll be home in my own bed at night and be able to hang out with my kids. And you know, you and you'll get all, you'll get all the service you would have gotten anyway. Um, so yeah. 
Now, now this is one of my personal trainers that that in my Marine Corps career got me. Uh, Master Guns Ray Gagnon just popped in. Contact team equals di- the, he was on the Marine Corps contact team. Different oh, okay. city every week in home city. First of the quarter, life on the road, year after year. He was yeah. constantly gone, and he was that. That's a tough life. Oh, he was, you know, and, and he had a he had to show up and basically unscrew people who were who were were jacked up in sales, and and that's really mm-hmm. where I, my belief in in the foundation of sales. I used to always tell the analogy I used to always use, and this will show our age a little bit. I don't know if you're a big football guy or not. I used to always use the analogy. What's the difference between Ryan leaf and Eli Manning and guys would be like, well, this I'm like fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Eli had amazing fundamentals that when Mm -hmm. the game changed, he could go back to Ryan leaf. Couldn't. And for those right. of you that are listening that has no idea who that is, go look up who, who they were. <laughs> you probably know Eli. Ryan, you can go pull up his arrest record, and now he's a big <laughs> public speaker. Um, but but no, I mean, I, I, I just recently, you know, doing some shifts in my own sales, I found one of the things that has gotten better on my end, and I was curious about this for you, is um, that – I find going and knocking on doors is better now. Probably because no, not as many people are doing. Now I, uh, you mentioned I'm a uh, uh, I'm a uh, a marketing guy too. Right, and, I was going to uh, ask you about that. Yeah, one one of the things in the same vein as knocking on doors is better because not as many people are doing it. Um, doing direct mail is better because there's there's nobody in your mailbox because everybody is so uh, uh, you know so. Uh, enamored with online marketing, Facebook and, and Instagram and YouTube ads and, and Google click paper clicks and all that stuff. And, and if you'll buy a stamp, you're, you're in a very comp- minimum competitive uh, zone. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. so you, you're saying that there are some legacy marketing things that still have value. Like where would you, I, it, in those legacy marketing things, where would you put the value in, Ones that you would say, hey, I know you just mentioned mail outs. Where do you put those things? For, for, for local businesses, for entrepreneurial businesses, I would say um, number one is direct mail. But worth testing, uh, absolutely worth testing is magazine advertising. I still do a lot of business out of newspapers. If you talk to if you talk to most marketing people, it's oh, newspapers are dead. Nobody advertises newspapers. Yeah, nobody except the largest national brands advertise in newspapers all the time. The smartest direct marketers in the country advertise in newspapers all the time. Go pick up a newspaper. I know uh, uh, for for you, uh, you know, for you twenty uh, uh, year olds, a newspaper is actually a. <laughs> It's not online. It's actually a printed thing on a piece of paper. It's folded over. It's on cheap paper because you, it, uh, it's disposable, and you actually like pick it up. Has the news and a lot of advertising in it. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, people are. Uh, uh, I mean, all over the place. It's uh, uh, so I, I would say um, definitely direct mail. I think newspapers are worth testing. Magazines are worth testing. Believe it or not, yellow pages are worth testing if you if you service an older demographic. There's a lot of people who are six, you know, who are in their sixties and late sixties, seventies, eighties. They got money, they're willing to spend it if you can do what they want, what they want you to do. But they don't want to get on Google and type in the name. They don't. Ha- they don't even have a computer, but they have a Yellow Pages that still gets delivered. It's a lot smaller than it used to be. Yeah. I guess why? That's because there's less people in it. There's less companies in it, so it's worth testing. Will it work? Well, I don't know. That's something you've got to you, you've got to test. The the thing in marketing is you always got to test it. You know, there's there's all kinds of strange places that people run ads that uh, that end up working beautifully well, and all kinds of places that um, that should work that don't work at all. So it's uh, uh, but the fundamentals I would say as far as leg- legacy marketing, I would say direct mail is probably the first. That's where I would start with any business. And, uh, and if anybody tells you direct mail doesn't work, it's just cause they're doing it wrong. Uh, you know, that's like if somebody goes to the gym and, uh, does the, does the, does the exercises, you know, puts, puts four pounds on the bench press and does four, you know, does put 10 of them and then gets in the mirror and looks and says, Oh, well that, I didn't gain any strength in my chest. Well, yeah, cause you did it wrong. 
so you you know direct mail works for virtually every single business in existence even google and facebook use direct mail think about that google uses direct mail to sell their pay-per-click you know to sell their adsense right i mean what I, well yeah because it works so, and it's it's funny. Like I always try to explain to people in my with my market, and I'd be curious if it would work for yours. I still believe in television ads because I sure. feel like if you own a business or you're in that professional level, you still sit down and watch the news. You probably don't watch the shows or none of that, but you watch the morning news, the evening news. You catch those things because you want to know what's going on in your community. Right. what's happening nationally. So I still feel like those are, are valued things. What, what's your thoughts on that? I've not done a whole lot of TV, um, uh, but that's not, that's only because uh, it's just not something that uh, it's just not something that I've ever, you know, I've, I've ever taken the time to do. However, I will say in general, um, if the demographics are right and the viewership is right, then it's absolutely worth a try. So, it, 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 what I'm trying to say is, if you're trying to sell, if you're trying to sell something to uh, 22 year olds, and you're going to put it on, uh, you know, on the uh, nightly news, you know, the NBC nightly news, the local news in your area, it's not going to sell. But if you're, like you said, if your market is watching, and uh, then it's worth a test. And you know, and then, and of course, when I say test, I don't mean run, run ad and say, oh, we didn't get any phone calls. With anything like that, it's you've got to run more than one, uh, you know, over, over, and over. What's this say? Uh, so, so Master Guns owns one of the. Uh, it's actually the largest veteran-owned franchise in the country. Is J Dog Junk Removal? Oh, and okay. He owns one of those. And what he's saying is postcards. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, postcards uh, notes highly effective in repeat referral business, direct mail, new, old, modern secret. Yeah. Yeah. Master and it's only with it's you. only a secret because it's not bright and shiny and buzzing and and flashing in their face. So everybody thinks, you know, and and there's no uh, and there's no uh, uh, there's no direct mail salesperson. Right. So so the news, there's a newspaper salesperson, there's a radio salesperson, there's a Facebook salesperson, there's a Google salesperson, there's an online salesperson. There's a guy who wants to sell you, uh, you know, sell you a website. Right. But there's nobody that wants to sell you direct mail. So it's, uh, you know, so nobody knows about it. it is. It's, it's a, it's a secret hidden in plain sight. Yeah. And, and it's I mean, just a pile of gold. It, you're, you're, and like you said, it, it's a, it's a new, it's a new old modern secret. Just mm-hmm. leave, leave it out there. And, and I'll tell you, I think the, as, as we're talking about it and I'm thinking about things that come to my house that are in, especially mm-hmm. construction or, or, or service industries like that. When those come right. to my house, I'm probably more likely to read those ones than any others because they're normally, you've got this problem, I've got this solution, here's a coupon mm-hmm. or something in there, call me at this number. It, they're directed here's, to the point they're done. Here's here's a secret that uh, that I usually don't tell people unless they're paying me. Okay, so <laughs> um, when you do direct mail people believe that you're a real business more because there's a physical thing. There's a physical, they, they, you had to pay to buy this paper. You had to pay to put ink on it. You had to pay to put, to put, put it into postage to get to, to get them to deliver to you. Um, when you, any, they, everybody knows at this point that a 12 year old can set up a website and there's, and, and anybody who's looked into it knows that Facebook, Google, et cetera, is all, pay afterwards they all know, they know you can run up you know run up a bill and you pay the bill afterwards so i could literally start a name whatever kind of goofy business of stuff that i don't know how to do um i could start a business tomorrow on facebook put up a website start running some facebook ads start driving some traffic i could start that tomorrow with probably about 75 bucks and you can't do that with direct mail and people subconsciously know that they know that this is a physical thing. I have this person has invested in trying to get my attention and sending me this piece of thing, this, this piece of mail. So they must be a real business where that guy with the pixels, maybe, maybe not. See, that's, that makes so much sense to me 
Mm-hmm. And, and it, I've never put it in those terms, but that's that's deep, brother. Like that's that's really. <laughs> I mean, like like I, as a guy who does this, also, I mean, I'm thinking about that, and I'm a believer in legacy, and, and I told you what I believe in. But mm-hmm. just thinking about that, like, because I do the same thing. How many times do you see an ad on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, anywhere? It pops up, and you're like, scroll past this. This is another mm-hmm. scam. It's a scam. It's got to be a scam. Yeah. Well, and, and there's so another reason anything that online is. Yeah, well, you, it, it's easier to be a scam. Also, the other thing is that uh, it's a crowded marketplace. All right, so so whatever whatever uh, whatever preferences that Facebook has learned that you want to see, whatever preferences that YouTube has learned that you want to see, Instagram, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever preferences they've learned you want to see, you're getting. You know, that's a busy marketplace. You're getting slammed with ads from a, a million different, maybe not a million, but but a thousand, no, two thousand, three thousand different advertisers who are just hammering you and hammering you and hammering you and hammering you. But when you go to the mailbox, you know, you don't you don't get anymore. You don't get two or three pieces of mail from the same industry. No. You might get, you know, you'll you'll get you you'll get your 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 co-op mailings, you know, your advos or whatever the co-op mailings are. Um, you'll get maybe a, uh, you know, maybe there's a magazine that you get once a month that has, you know, 400 different advertisers in it, like a penny saver or something. But yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And then, uh, and then you might get a postcard or you might get a piece of direct mail, but that postcard or piece of direct mail, if done properly, it's the only one in there. It's the only one. It, it's, it's the only one in your industry. Even if there's two postcards, it's the only, that's only, you're the only postcard in your industry in that mailbox at any given point. Does anybody so, still sell those addresses anymore, though? Like, you can always oh, get the... Do, do that. I'm like, I don't know. Privacy was dead long before the internet, my friend. I know that. I could, like, I could get... Uh, 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 you said nothing's off limits, right? Because it's kind yeah, of a no, politically correct it. example. But, yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, I could get a, a list of one-legged midgets that drive 1978 Cadillacs with, right. with primer, uh, primer driver side front ends. Uh, uh, that lived in any given zip code in the country. Now the list right. would be small, but I could get that list in the eighties. Long and they before the, the internet. Left hand side of the road. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Look, I know what you're, yeah. 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 So, hey. so the I mean, that privacy has been dead for a long time. Well, we were just talking about this, and, and I'm not promoting this company, but I'll save the name. But there's a company out there that reached to me through for my company that one important to me is finding people like you company owners getting past gatekeepers getting past you know those people who feel like they're the the proprietary holders of all the truths for the company and they're not decision makers though and it's always been that's always been the toughest thing in sales how to get past the gatekeeper and you know we have linkedin you can just click on it and get past them there's a company that i talk to that will give you i think they have somewhere around three million or four million names of hr managers directors everything else under the sun and we're not Mm -hmm. just talking their their office email and their office phone number their personal phone number their personal email Mm -hmm. their linkedin link and when i and when i asked the guy how did you end up with this he goes oh we paid and he told me the number so many millions of people they paid to be able to look at all their emails and the email signatures within their emails so they paid people to look at their emails look at their email signatures and take all those signatures and create a database well um here's here's a technique tell me something how much is a customer worth if you can land a uh, let's say a a decent sized business not a small business but if you can land a business has a thousand employees and uh you know doing some business how how much uh you know how much? Well, a small business, according to the SBA, is 500 employees or less. So there's lots of quote unquote small businesses who are doing millions right. in sales. But if if you know how much uh, how much would that be worth to you? In my industry, if I landed a company that had a thousand em- employees, mm-hmm. you're physically talking it's millions of dollars that 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 could be over a couple of years. You know, at least three to four hundred thousand a year. Okay, so so here's what you do. I'm going to tell you how to get in front of any HR manager you want to get in front of, and you're going to do it way better and way easier than than doing a database and sending emails and everything, okay? Um, you find out where their office is, find out where they're – and there are, uh, there are these um, 
these books that you, you can do a book or you can do like a, a, a video, a little video where you load up a video and you open up and the video clicks on. So you make your presentation on that video. Okay. You take that video and you give it to a courier and the courier dresses in a suit, goes in with a briefcase, briefcase handcuffed to their wrist and handcuffed, you know, and goes in and says, I need to deliver this directly to Mr. So-and-so. Now that's an expensive direct mail campaign. Yes. But if that custom, if that if that person is worth four or five hundred thousand dollars a year to you on a year after year, then it's a very it's it, you know I mean you're going to get a remarkable return on investment on that. And like I said, I mean it, it might cost you three four hundred dollars five hundred dollars per piece that you send out. But if you're closing one in ten, so it costs you five thousand dollars to get a sale for somebody who's going to pay you back four hundred thousand dollars in a year. Oh yeah, you know it's it's an e- it's a no brainer. Yeah, all, so all day I, long. And so they and you make sure the courier shows up in a suit with a tie and wearing their, you know, wearing their, uh, 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 you know, with the with the handcuffed, and you got to do the whole thing. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have don't and, and say I have to give this directly to so and so. You don't not well. I'll take it. No, I'm sorry, I can't take it. Uh, I have to give it directly to so and so. They got to have the handcuffs. That's that's the key to the whole deal. And it, uh, uh, and they will, they'll get through. I promise you. Oh yeah, like like who's stopping? Like we all know the handcuff briefcase, right? Is, that's yeah. like, like that's presidential level importance. Exactly. And, and Master exactly. Gun says easy to get mailing list now because there's no so so few businesses doing the direct mail. I I'm mm-hmm. I kid you not. I'm I'm probably gonna have a conversation tomorrow with my marketing team because I've been talking about this. Like, hey, we really need to to send out direct mails to companies to say we're in the area, we're here. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. Uh, I really think that that you're that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it, now the, here's the thing: is not only we get to the person, there's not one person who gets that who's going to not watch that presentation. Right. No, not at all. And and yeah. And the they, CEO the, of the uh, company's coming to the HR's office and being like, "What the hell's going on? What was that?" Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's good. the HR person is going to call him and say, "You got to get down here. You're not going to believe this. Look at this thing. This these people sent this. It showed up with a guy who was handcuffed to his wrist, and he refused to leave until he handed it to me personally. And and you know, and and, and he had the key, and he wouldn't unlock it. And he did his wrist, and he unlocked it. Then, and yeah, it's it's it Have will you make done this? you'll you'll get a lot of people, huh? Have you done it? I've done something like it. I haven't done that exact thing, but I've done something like it. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a very successful campaign. It only works if it's a very high ticket item, right? And uh, uh, and, and you know, but but it it gets now the cheap way to do that, and I don't recommend that for you because you're talking about big numbers. But let's say somebody's making a thousand dollar sale, the cheap way to do it is with FedEx. So you put you put everything in a FedEx package and and send it, okay. and FedEx. FedEx is always open. There's not a FedEx that's delivered anywhere in the country that's not open. They're never ignored. Envelopes are thrown right away. FedExes are never thrown right away. FedEx shows up with an envelope, with a FedEx envelope, and delivers it, and it's getting open. And it's probably not getting open by the gatekeeper. It's probably getting open by the person who it's addressed to. Right. Yeah, not all yeah. the time, but probably. Gatekeeper's probably not touching that thing like, oh, shit, this says mm-hmm. Joe Smith on it. Joe needs to get this. That's theirs. Right. Yeah, I that's that's this. the. It's not. It's not as good as the guy with the. With the Look, you know, I want to just briefcase, videotape that but... one. <laughs> Master Guns, <laughs> if you're out there still briefcase. listening, you got your suit. I'm sending Master Guns in. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, send 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 an old gunny. They, he'd scare them. Oh, Master Guns would be perfect. <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about anything. He would cost me too much. He would be way more than a couple hundred dollars. I by, couldn't afford him. By the way, as a as a side note, I just want to go back. Um, uh, uh, just to the sales thing, the, the, the one thing that I regret about the one sales training I regret not getting is, uh, uh, is U S military, uh, U S military recruiter sales training. Those guys are incredible. Those guys are the best. So that's the one thing that I would like to have had is, uh, going through the, the, the sales training, the recruiters go to. Well, that was so. That's what I was talking about. Master Guns was Master Guns Gagnon was the one that one of the Marines that trained me when I came out, and I was full of piss and vinegar, and I thought I had it all figured out. And mm-hmm. it was him, uh, Brad, him, Matt Shy, Brad Lang, uh, Bill Kelly. These are folks I stay, still stay in touch with to this day. All 
all were senior to me and guys that would sit me down, mostly telling me I, I was a loudmouth asshole who needed right. to just listen. Cause I was a hard closer. I was a hard closer. I was the guy that when you walked in my office, I shook your hand and went, so you ready to be a Marine? Because I wanted to, I wanted to close it and be done with it, do paperwork and be like, see, I'm a badass. They just saw me and wanted to be like me. And then these right. guys were like, and then these guys were like, Hey idiot, do you think we sent you to school for three months? So you could just do that. That's why you're, these guys, <laughs> that's why some of these guys aren't shipping to boot camp because you got no rapport. And that's the mm-hmm. other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, we're getting close to that hour mark. You got time still, or do you need to get ready to yeah, go? Yeah, no, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. I'm having a good time. So we're great. Um, how I, I know the value I put it into it. I, I truly mm-hmm. believe it's the most, uh, most important tool that we have in our, in our arsenal is building rapport. Mm-hmm. How important or, or how, I guess I'm not even trying to think of the best way to ask this, but how difficult was it for you to learn to build rapport? It was very, very, very difficult. I, by nature, I'm kind of prickly. I'm an introvert. Um, I don't like talking to people, which seems like completely antithetical because I'm, you know, because I'm a, a, without patting myself on the back, I don't want to break my arm, pat myself on the back, but I'm a really freaking good salesperson. Um, but, uh, uh, but I'm not naturally friendly. I'm not naturally, you know, I'm, I'm, if you see me walking down the street, if I don't know you and you say hi to me, I'm probably going to ignore you uh, unless you're, you know, unless you're a good looking girl. Um, and so building rapport was, was something I really had to work on. I had to work to learn how to do it. Um, and, uh, uh, and, but it's just like anything else. It's just a skill, right? I mean, it, it, human nature is human nature is human nature. So you just learn the skill, um, get prepared for prank mail. Now, sorry, I keep getting, I keep getting distracted. Yeah, no, I'm that, sorry about that. I, I try to bring up every, when people yeah. have comments so that they can, yeah, all... no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, but it's just a skill. So, and, and it's just a matter of learning how to do it. So, uh, mind if I tell a, uh, mind yeah, if I tell a, 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 a field story, yeah, I was gonna please. say a war story, but with all these Marines around here, it's I'm a little ashamed <laughs> to, cons- to call one of my sales field stories, a war story. Um, so, uh, I used to call parents this, insurgents. Yeah. <laughs> um, we used to, uh, oh, I, I, I was selling a roof to somebody one time and, uh, and I walk into their house and this guy, he's an older guy, um, had his granddaughter living with him. Granddaughter was late teens, uh, you know, still in high school. And, uh, she was running out of the house while we were there. She's bye, like, bye grandpa, whatever. Blah, blah, and he's leave. And he's just, and it, he's, he's done well for himself. Um, all sales stores are worse. Well, thank you, Gunny. I appreciate that. Master Gun. That's Master Gun. <laughs> Master Gun. Oh, pardon me, Master Gun. Pardon me. I didn't mean to. Don't uh, don't be mad at me. Um, and uh, so he, uh, uh, you know, and he's just prickly as can be. He's f- arms folded, standoffish, scowling. And uh, at the time, I used to care. I used to have somebody who came with me to do all the nasty stuff. Right. So I, I would dress nice and then I would have somebody climb up and go through it because I wanted to be a roofing consultant, not a roofing salesperson. Um, so I would have somebody, they'd crawl all over the roof and take pictures and crawl through the attic and do all that stuff. Then they'd go hop in the truck and wait for me to get done. So, uh, um, so that, and not only that, but that gave me, while he was doing that for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, it gave me a chance to get some rapport because we don't have anything to talk about. I don't have the roof inspection back yet. So we can't even really talk intelligently about your roof. So we're sitting there for 20 minutes. It's a good time to start chatting and getting a little rapport going, you know, getting a little something going. So, and, and this guy, like I said, I mean, you know, the kind of arms in front of him. And, oh, yes. And, closed. And completely closed just, off to you. Just not, he's not going to hear anything. He just, you know, I can tell. It's just give me the price and everything. So I'm saying, you know, oh, what's that? Oh, oh, that's kind of cool. And mm-hmm, Yeah. Yeah, I got that there. And then I saw this, uh, what looked to be um, some kind of native mask, you know, like, um, I don't know what kind, but some kind of native aboriginal mask or something up on his uh, thing. And I said, uh, I said, man, hey, let me ask you something. I said, those things, what, what are those? Those are really, there's two or three of them. I said, those are really cool. I really dig those. What are, are they, you know, are those some kind of, kind of native mask or something? And he goes, no, I made those. And arms came down and smiled. 
I said, you did? He said, yeah, I also made the one in the front yard. Come look. And he shows me, and he's got like this wind thing in the front yard. It's, it was made out of, out of a very dark tin. And, and I got run around the corner, too. And as he's leading me around the corner, I'm grinning. Better get your checkbook out, son, because you're getting ready to rock. You're getting ready to buy a roof. <laughs> and he did, by the way. He bought the roof, and you know. Um, uh, and and by the way, when I say you know, I mean I say that kind of stuff, and people think, oh, I, they think it's scummy. Look, that's no. every salesperson. That's what they're yes. they're they're in it for the action. And we always did a great job. It was a roofing company I owned, so uh, I I knew it was going to be the best roof that the guy ever had on his house anywhere in any house he ever did so i didn't mind being a little uh uh you know but but yeah it was just uh, uh when when he opened up he dropped his arms and smiled and opened up and started showing me around his house and it was like we're done yeah, i mean it, it you, you might as well it was it was as if the sun was going to come up in the morning it was as sure as anything else he was buying a roof that day and he did well that's the drug that's the drug mm-hmm. for us like, yeah like I've, I've had anxiety attacks. I've had heart palpitations. Everything, but the minute that close happens, you're like, yeah, and yeah. You want the next one, and you want it's the next a one. it's a heck of a dopamine hit. It is massive, and it's funny you're talking about the uh, the body language. I actually, you know, like I said, you talk about the sales training we got in the in the mm-hmm. in the military for recruiters. I've actually got formal classes on body language Mm -hmm. uh how to speak how someone's talking blading which is when somebody turns their body sideways that means they're trying Mm -hmm. to leave the conversation closed hands open hands all all that stuff can't tell you how important that is have you ever done any training on that or do you provide that to any of your salespeople? a very a little bit and and it's i've never done any training i've read some books on it and i have learned through experience over the last 30 years but I, I would not call myself an expert at it. But basic stuff, yes. I, I mean, I can, you know, if you look one direction, then you're, you know, if you look one direction, you're thinking. If you look the other direction, you're imagining, uh, you know, with your eyes. Um, if, if people are closed up, obviously, that's one thing. If they're, you know, if they're opened up, that's a whole different one. And, and it's more about body language that you want to present. So, like, for example, I'm 5'9". I'm, uh, I'm and weigh a little over 300 pounds. Now I'm overweight, little guy, but in, little guy. but in, but in fighting trim, like if I was in fighting trim, getting in the ring, I'd be about 250 pounds. So I'm a big guy who has fat on him, not just a fat jello blub, you know? And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so what I learned, what I learned early on is when I knock, because, you know, I've always been big when I knock on a door at a house, I want to take two steps back and turn sideways. Like I'm getting ready to leave. Just like you said, like the blading, like you're getting ready to leave. I want to do that and turn to it so that when, when they open the door, it's not like this big guy coming at the house. You know what I mean? I, it's very non-threatening because it's almost like I'm getting ready to walk away. So they're not – it doesn't feel like I'm pushing my way in their house. Um, so that's, that's – uh, uh, th- Yeah, so, so a lot of body language stuff like that about how to control your body because uh, the fact is that the way you control your body is going to – uh, in, in at least half or more of the situation is going to affect and determine how they control their body. That, that, no, you're, I agree a hundred percent. Are you, I'm big are you familiar smiling. with the idea of pacing and leading? Are you the idea of pacing no, and what, leading? What you, what's, what's that? Okay. So, so what you do is you, you mimic their body language, right? And you mimic their body language. When they make a move, you make a move and you do this. You don't want to be, you don't, you don't want to, like when they do this, you do, you like you're in a mirror, right? You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be an idiot about it. But if, uh, you know, if they're sitting like this, then you kind of sit like this and you talk with them. And, uh, you know, and then when they, you know, if they put their arm down, then you wait a second or two and put your arm down. And, uh, you know, if they shift in their chair, then you wait a second or two and shift in your chair. And you start doing that and you get in a rhythm with that person. And then you start moving your body and they follow you. It's very, very interesting. It, it, it takes some practice, uh, and it's a higher-level skill. But if you get good at it, it's very interesting. I'm rusty. I'm out of practice because I, I, don't, I don't do a lot of, uh, um, what is that, mirroring, pacing, and leading. Yes, sir, that's exactly what it is. Um, I'm, I'm out of practice because I don't do a lot of face-to-face sales anymore. But when I did, I used that a lot. I used that to open. Now, I told the story about finding something to create rapport, but I did that a lot to open people up. Cause I would, I'd start using my body like they did theirs 
And then I would open myself up slowly. You know, you, you can't just boom, like a big, huge change because they won't do it. But you slowly just start opening yourself up a little bit at a time and then they'll open themselves up. So a lot of it is how you run your how you handle your body will inform how they handle their body. It makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. I, I get but I guess I've never heard it put that way. I like that one. So I. So all these different things, have you, I'm just, this is more of a curiosity. Have you ever thought about putting your own, putting, you know, what you've learned techniques into, into written for making a book or a video or or any of those kind of things? I I do consulting with people depending on, you know, so I do consulting with businesses who need sales training. I'll do sales training of their staff and that kind of thing. I don't really want to put together a product um, for a couple of reasons. Number one. Uh, frankly, if you're looking for a product, I think there are fantastic things in existence. You don't need mine. The world doesn't need ever sales training. It's got fan. It's got incredibly good sales trainers out there already. Um, and, uh, number two, that business, the, the, you know, the, the product business, the info market, it's called info marketing is what people in the business call it because you're, you're marketing information. Um, it has, it's been tainted as of late because what'll happen is, uh, you know, every 30 year old who's, who, who's had a success on Instagram or who got lucky in business here or any, and, and, and that's not take anything away from them. I mean, if somebody has done well for themselves, then, then bless them. Good for them. But, um, uh, but everybody who has any little success now wants to create a product and sell, sell the product. And it's just, it, it's, you know, it, it, should I probably, but am I going to do it? Probably not, because it's just a personal thing. I, uh, I don't like the industry anymore. I love the industry when I first started 30 years ago. And that industry is responsible for a lot of my success, learning, learning what, uh, what people did uh, and learning how to do these things, sales and marketing and, you know, et cetera. Um, so I don't take anything away from the good, you know, from the good ones in the industry. There's just too many people who are not good you know there's too many people who are who are not really that good and uh you know there 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 have been some some old time folks uh in the business so uh for example one one of the people who was considered kind of the modern day uh the modern day godfather of info marketing his name's dan kennedy now it existed a long time before he was around but he didn't invent the business but he's kind of considered the godfather of it he expanded it dramatically and one of his sayings was, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Uh, meaning that you don't have to be perfect or the best of the best of the best. But when Dan said that, you know, people took it as, oh, I can read a book and then just repackage what's in the book and never having done it. <laughs> and what he meant is, you don't have to be the, 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 the best expert in the world. But, you know, he kind of thought, Everybody, nobody's going to do this without being competent at the skill that they're trying to teach. And the problem is, is that, you know, do you remember the old mimeograph machine from when we were in el- elementary school? Yes. Not the Xerox machines. The one. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Wait, you remember you'd put one and then you'd use the copy and, and like the third copy, you couldn't read anything right. on it. It, it was got, just a bunch got... of Xbox. Well, that, that's kind of what we have now in the info marketing business. They're like third copy, you know, it's third, third generation mimeograph copies of people who really knew what they were doing. It's the movie now, not all of them. It's the movie multiple. Multiplicity. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Not all of them. That's not to say everybody in that business. There's a lot of great guys in the business. So I'm not, I'm not poo poo in the whole business. It's just, there's enough of the other ones that I don't really want to be in that business too deep. I, I get that. Well, I still think you should maybe put, put together some YouTube videos or something. And if you're not going to promote yours, cause master guns always, always is supporting me. He's got his system. It's called the boss system. He's got one that he puts together. So you can reach out oh, okay. to Ray, re- reach out to Ray Gagnon and check out the boss system. But I'm scrolling across the bottom right now. If somebody is looking to for some consultation work, for some sales uh, consultation, if you go on to facebook.com backslash and you look up Everett Farnell, and that's E-V-E-R-T-E, and then Farnell is F-A-R-N-E-L-L.com. You can find him also on yeah, – well, uh, take- Take the dot com off of that, off the second one. It's facebook.com oh, right. slash Facebook. Dot, uh, I yeah. an extra dot com. So take the extra. That's okay. No problem. 
and well, then you, well, you put my website on there too, everettfarnell.com, but you can't get in touch with me through my website, so don't go there. It's, yeah, don't you go there, look at it if you want to do something effective or productive there. So Facebook is how to get in touch with me, yeah. And link and LinkedIn, you're on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn, and is, is I'm on there, and I'm on Instagram, and so yeah. But he's uh, on the gram. It's a lot of swimsuit modeling pictures, though, on his Instagram. Him, not a me. Him, him in in very small two piece. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I would. I, I think they would probably kick me off if I did that. <laughs> yeah. say, you violated our community standards. <laughs> <laughs> you vi- you violate you violated so many things we don't know what it is. <laughs> we don't even know where to start, but we don't come don't come around no more. <laughs> <laughs> what is Santa Claus doing, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, we're gonna get ready to close close the bar up here, Everett. It was a pleasure. You are welcome back anytime. This was I mean you I, I always say that I, I love talking to other sales folks. It, I, it, this is, you know, I can talk football, I can talk sports, but there's nothing to me as enjoyable as talking sales and telling sales stories and, and, and all those things. I got one for you that just was an experience. I, I, well, no, I love I'll it. tell it to you afterwards. You'll, you'll okay, get, a, okay. you'll get a good giggle out of it. Uh, Cause it's, I don't know if anybody I'll tell it anyway. You'll love this one. I'll tell this one and then we'll get right get out of here. So I was with one of my Marines and mm-hmm. we were in do you ever heard the term cold cracker country? You ever heard that term? No, can't say I have. So cold cracker country is northern PA, uh Panther Valley, Jim Thorpe, uh um, okay. around those areas of PA. Very um a lot of Yugos uh Slavic uh, people settled there mm-hmm. were coal miners. That's, you know, okay. that great Pennsylvania coal. Okay. Coal cracker. Yeah. That makes sense now. So okay. we're, I'm with one of my Marines and we walk in the house and I always say the nicest piece of furniture in the entire house was the half keg kegerator in the living room. Mm-hmm. Um, the, there was the baby brother crawling around with snot and cat hair in his, on his lip looked like a mustache. Sure, Mm-hmm. Um, the room that we were interviewing the kid in had was three, all the walls, except for one, which was a window had Barbie dolls on it mm-hmm. completely around the room. Um, I got a giggle out of the kid when he's like, yeah, my brother was in the Navy, but he was like, I don't want to be here anymore. So he just left and he let him go. And I walked out and I looked at the brother and I went, so did you pop for marijuana? And he goes, <laughs> and the kid goes, what I was like, yeah, so you, you failed the drug uh, uh, test, right? He goes, yeah. So all this is going on. Kid fails the practice as well. Fails it. But he didn't do too bad. We were like, hey, a little bit of practice. Um, and we're talking to the kid. About that time, dad and mom finally show up. Dad walks in, and he looks like he could have been a member of ZZ Tops. Okay. But super skinny. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mom walks in and as mom says hello she goes hello she reaches her hand out and grabs and pushes back on her face and i i look as she said hello her teeth shot out of her mouth oh no oh no (laughs) i was like (laughs) and i'm like where in the world am i at right now i'm a kid from east baltimore (laughs) i can i can handle anything but i'm like where in the world I, i Every Marine recruiter will tell you they are, they're going to write a book. We're going to I'm going to write a book about my experiences. None of us ever write right, a book. Right. None of us. Right. Do. But so we know where we can find you on Facebook at Everett Fresnel, LinkedIn Everett Fresnel. If you're looking for consultation work, uh, please reach out. If you're listening to this, you you hear it already. Everett knows his sales game. He's just you know opened my eyes to some legacy marketing things that I'm going to go take back to my people and say, hey, this is this is a value to us. Uh, I love the idea that it's, you know, it's a piece of paper. It's real. It's not digital fakeness. You're real. You're in front of me. Love that. Mm. Um, but now don't log off after this. we got to talk for just a moment. But okay. as we do in every single episode, the guest always gets the last word, Everett. So what's the final word for us? Well, uh, uh, you want to hear a funny sales story? Absolutely. Okay. I'm training the roofing business. 
And I go in with this, uh, with the sales, the guy salesman's named Gene. He's trained to be in the roofing business. And, um, he, <laughs> we walk into this house and it's a beautiful house. Uh, the, I think it was in Orlando, maybe in Tampa, but I think it was in Orlando. It's a beautiful house. And they have this, this big white dog, not huge, but big enough, 50, 60 pounds. And, uh, this thing is just uncontrolled. It's not mean, just jumping up and, and, and the, the wife is, oh, Fluffy, or whatever the hell the dog's name. Oh, Fluffy, stop, stop that. Oh, Fluffy, stop. Oh, Fluffy, leave the guy. Oh, leave him alone. Oh, Fluffy. Oh, I'm so sorry. She's like this all the time. She just loves people. And get the, and the dog's jumping up. And it's, it's getting to the point where it's annoying. I mean, I love dogs. I, I really am not saying that as a trite throwaway line. I really do very much. like I like dogs more than I like most people. Um, and, uh, but this dog is just getting annoying, right? So she says, uh, well, come on, if we ignore Fluffy or whatever the dog's name was, uh, we'll, you know, she'll, she'll go, he'll go away. He'll go leave us alone. And so she says, come, let me show you where the leak is. So we start up the stairs and Fluffy starts after us. And it's the, it's the homeowner and then Gene, who's training me and Fluffy jumps in front of me and I'm, I'm bringing up the rear. And, uh, and this, this dog jumps up on Gene and starts like humping him. <laughs> and Gene picks up his picks up his leg, it lifts his leg at his knee, and heels kicks that dog right in the balls. <laughs> it was oh, the funniest shit. thing I ever saw. Oh, the dog shit. goes, yep, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Gene turns around. Oh my god, Fluffy, are you okay? The woman turns around. What's wrong? What's he said? I don't know. I must have stepped on his foot or something. I didn't even know he's behind me. I'm on the side, like. My eyes are tearing up, and I'm biting my tongue, trying not to laugh. Just, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. Oh my! God. <sighs> and I, needless to say, the dog didn't bother us for the rest of the visit. But, uh, but that I mean, it was you know that that kind of stuff. And and sorry if you're a dog lover, I'm a dog lover too. But the dog had it coming; it was being annoying. It need, somebody needed to take control of the thing, um, and. Uh, if memory serves, Gene sold the roof too, but it was just, I, I mean, it was everything I could do not to fall down the stairs laughing. She turned around, eyes big. Gene, Gene faked it. Oh my God, what happened? What, what, what's wrong, Fluff? Fluffy's running down the stairs and around the corner. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I must accident. I'm so sorry. I must have stepped on his foot on accident. I, I didn't know. I didn't know he's even behind me. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. He's, he, he, don't worry about it. He's fine. He'll be fine. And I mean, in the meantime, he kicked that dog right in his nuts. I mean, just bigger. Oh, it was hysterical. All righty, folks, be sure to push your stool there. <laughs> this has been an Earplug Podcast presentation. Found on EarplugPodcast.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever your favorite podcasts are found.